Hey everybody, welcome to day 20, part three. We're halfway through the 40 day challenge. I wanted to do a quick review of some of the topics that we covered. I won't be able to go into great detail about anything, but I want you to appreciate some of the things that we talked about in case you missed the previous 19 videos and encourage you to go back and watch. I wanna take a moment just to reiterate the importance of those part one videos, which are the meditation, and the breath work, along with some contemplation. I made claims three and a half weeks ago about there are gonna be people who are going to be totally asymptomatic from this virus. They're not going to even know that they have it. There's going to be some people that get a minor flu. There will be people who wind up in a hospital. Then there'll be people who wind up in the ICU. And then there'll be people who die. And I made this analogy to a marathon, like we're all about to run a marathon. And my goal for all of you is to finish in the top 10%, which would mean that you're going to be asymptomatic. And we see more and more and more that this is actually the case that people are getting this virus. And it turns out their immune system is so strong that they don't even have it. There are many things along the way that several of you have commented I was talking about things before other people were talking about it. And I assure you that that will continue to be the trend as this virus unfolds. And we'll talk about that a little bit today. But I want you to appreciate that breathing is one of the most important things that you can focus on for many of the reasons that we're going to get into in a moment. But breathing correctly through your nose, breathing correctly when you sleep, starting your day off with breath work. All of these things have different benefits. When you start the day off breathing correctly, you're actually activating your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest system. Today, more than ever, we need to have that system online because when it comes to your immune system, there is no question about it that stress and anxiety lead to a broken down immune system. If you start your day off doing certain breath work, doing certain meditation work, that parasympathetic system comes online. And it turns out that uh, more and more research is coming, uh, becoming available that people who have a regular practice of meditation have bolstered immune systems. Now, again, everything that I'm asking people to do over this 40 day challenge has to do with finishing the top 10%. So everything matters. At the end of the day, many of the things that I'm asking people to do are not that difficult. However, I want you to step back for a moment and recognize what's actually happening in society right now. And I made that call three and a half weeks ago as well. I said, instead of people bolstering their immune system, what we're about to see is people moving a lot less, eating a heck of a lot more, being way more stressed out, sleeping poorly. All of these things contribute to um, a broken down immune system. So in order to mitigate this, uh, this problem, I'm giving you the best of what I know. And we started off talking about digestion and appreciating how and why people are not optimizing the vitamin and vitamins and minerals that they're consuming through their food. So first of all, the quality of food matters, obviously. So if we're eating out of boxes, cans, and packages, that has its own problem. If we're eating too much sugar, that's its own problem, which we will get into. But just appreciate that through our digestive process, I explained each step along the way between saliva, stomach acid, problems in the small intestine, um, irritable bowel, Crohn's disease, all these things map onto the malabsorption of some of the most important vitamins and nutrients, especially fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A and vitamin D, which are extremely consequential in bolstering their, the immune system. We also talked about iron. We talked about um, uh, many other, uh, you know, zinc, we talked about calcium and all these things that block absorption of different minerals, different vitamins, and how to take these vitamin minerals throughout the day. Maybe take this in the morning, this at night. 
if you're taking Tums and Rolaids and all these things, how and why that that's a problem. So appreciate that it starts with digestion. Then we started talking about the gut specifically, and we got into not just stomach acid and the small intestine and the pancreatic enzymes and um, the bile and how, the, how fat is emulsified into the body, all those omega-3s, omega-6s, omega-9s, and again, all those fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, K1, and K2, all of which are extremely important for processes in the body. But we went further and we talked more about the gut microbiome and how important it is for those gut microbes to be strong and healthy and what happens when the gut is permeated and how, more, how much more likely an individual it is to have things like autoimmune diseases when this happens because that is essentially the body attacking itself. Um, so we know that people that have Compromised guts are more likely to have autoimmune issues. Again, that was talked about it in, in detail in, in certain, um, when one of the, I don't remember it was day two or day three. We talked about the consequences of Italy and why is it that they got hit so hard. We talked about some of their um, social norms and the age of the groups. We talked about um, um, a bunch of variables there that a lot of people weren't thinking about. But what you're going to see more and more if we look at New Orleans, I predict that you're going to see a super high death rate in New Orleans. Why? Because the obesity rate down there is unbelievable. I, I also, uh, which I will do a separate seminar on, there are actually other variables in New Orleans that I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here. But I have other reasons to believe that New Orleans will be worse than probably any other city as far as death rate, meaning the percentage of people who get it compared to the people who die will be very high in uh, that particular city. Um, we talked about insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. So when we're looking at the most consequential reasons why people are dying as of now, we see type 2 diabetes slash insulin resistance um, slash fatty liver disease. So what does that all map onto? It maps onto high ALT levels in the blood. So there's that article that I put out in a separate um, newsletter that talks about high ALT levels. So I assure you, if you have high ALT levels, we're looking at somebody that has insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, um, is possibly an alcoholic, um, has fatty liver disease. This is the health of, of organs that I'm talking about. So it, if you have an unhealthy liver, it's almost certain that the other organs will be unhealthy and we really, really need organs to do their job. An easy way to mitigate this problem is to eat much less sugar and stop drinking a lot of alcohol because if we want to have fatty liver and high ALT levels, Go ahead and consume a lot of refined carbs, a lot of sugar, and drink a lot of alcohol. Again, the three things that we see that people that are getting the worst symptoms is aches and pains. Again, that's ubiquitous to most diseases. But the other two are high ALT levels. Again, so pay attention, high, high ALT levels. How do ALT levels get high in the liver? I, I assure you, these people are insulin resistant, type two diabetic, and or alcoholics, and or they're um, overweight by 30, 40 pounds. This is starting to sound like the average American. You map that onto the second thing, which or the third thing rather, which is hemoglobin, low hemoglobin. So we did a whole seminar talking about hemoglobin, the role of oxygen um, and iron in the body and we explained more clearly why the practice of breathing and meditation is so important for oxygen saturation in the blood because people who are dying of this disease, as they get worse, we see blood saturation of oxygen get lower and lower and lower. So I did a separate seminar talking about blood oxygen saturation and how we breathe really matters here. It's about getting oxygen to the right places. Um, we want oxygen we don't, um, let me, I'm not going to get into it here, but the point is, is how you breathe matters. 
um, iron matters, your iron status. So we talked about anemia. And although this research is not available anywhere that I can see, I predict that um, people who are anemic, for all the reasons that I explained in a separate video, have a much higher probability of having difficulty with this disease because of what we know about hemoglobin. So as things are released in the news about what do we see our markers, you have to ask, well, what are the downstream things here that are consequential? When it comes to hemoglobin, iron status really matters. There is a small percentage of the population that really does have low hemoglobin, and those people often have issues with iron. And it does matter whether you're a male or female. Females are much more likely to have an issue. So, when, so I would make a prediction, right? We see that 70% of men and 30% of women, are, um, so when there's a death, it's 70% men, 30% women. I'd be willing to bet that of the 30% of women that die, you're going to see high ALT levels, you're going to see um, low hemoglobin, but are they also anemic? Do they have problem with iron absorption? So we talked about how to increase your iron absorption because we know that it has something to do with healthy red blood cells and hemoglobin. You get the point. It's all about science and we talked about how D3 matters there, how vitamin A matters, and I put links there as well. And of course, to reiterate how important um, breathing is. We talked more about organ removal and how the removal of things like tonsils, things like your appendix, things like your gallbladder could actually matter tremendously to your body's ability to fight this disease. And then how to um, um, think more clearly about why were these organs removed in the first place and what are, what are their functions? Because guys, we shouldn't be removing 700,000 plus gallbladders a year in this country, 300,000 appendix. We shouldn't be removing 550,000 um, tonsils each year from children under 15. That number, those numbers need to reduce. And believe it or not, the tonsils uh, have reduced tremendously over the decades. And why do you think that's been? Because we're starting to realize more and more and more that these tonsils really, really matter. Again, just go, go back to your research. Uh, you'll see that a few decades ago, it was m over a million tonsils were being removed in a population less than we have today. So why are we doing it less? Because we're understanding more and more how important it is. There's a, and I just want you to understand that there's a, an asymmetry in the, the um, ethics here, right? So if you're a surgeon, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're a surgeon, you know, you make your money by cutting people open and removing things. Uh, that shouldn't be the person that you're going to for advice about whether or not something like tonsils should be removing, should be removed. That there's a problem there. Now, I'm not saying that surgeons are unethical. I am saying that if you're going to somebody who makes their living by cutting things out, and I'm not talking about they make a hundred bucks, you know, we're often talking about tens of thousands of dollars from a pretty simple, um, um, uh, operation. Remember, you can go back and you can look old school. There are countries that would literally remove tonsils on their own <laughs> without the, the, uh, the medical um, degree. So my point is, guys, understand how the organs work, what their functions are, and I did my best to get you guys to understand those things. And for the sake of your kids and for your kids' kids, teach them, hey, look, breathe this way. Understand that you need to eat this way. Understand that your gut is important for these reasons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We talked uh, very specifically about certain amino acids and their importance. Um, we went into glycine and taurine and, and a whole bunch of others and, and why they matter. And again, amino acids are proteins and sort of hacks that you might wanna try to do things like help you sleep better. Um, speaking of sleep, we did a whole seminar on sleep and how important it is to get good sleep because guys, the research shows, I put another link for that, that you are three times more likely to get a common cold when you're underslept. And those are longitudinal studies of over 10,000 people that have been followed. I assure you guys, never mind the fact that 
it has to do a lot with your immune system. It has a lot to do with your IQ. It has a lot to do with your um, emotional stability. It has a lot to do with um, blood sugar levels. Matthew Walker is the book. Matthew Walker's book is what I recommended everybody to check out, or you can check out him on YouTube and listen to him speak if you're interested in more um, information on sleep hacks. There's a lot of info out there, and I still have to do a part two on that that talks about insomnia, which I will do later. We talked about B vitamins with Jordans. We went through, you know, thiamine, riboflavin, B12, you know, folate, all those things, and how certain people with certain genetic polymorphisms or certain issues in their gut, why they matter, and how that matters in your immune system, as well as how it would matter in your whole sense of motivation and being and energy levels. So guys, the point is we did a lot. And I, ass I assure you that the information will continue to come. Um, again, when we look up here, I'm, I'm trying to give you guys navigation of, oh, and then of course we talked about mitochondrial health. We talked about uh, mitochondrial health and the role of ATP and uh, certain things that we know uh, bolster your mitochondria and you may say, well, why do mitochondria matter? Well, it only accounts for 95% of your body's energy. So having healthy young mitochondria really matter uh, for your immune system. I assure you of that. Dr. Lee No is the person that you might want to look into who is the one of the world's leading experts in understanding mitochondrial health and function. Hopefully you get the idea, guys. So I'm just hit, sitting here trying to share the best of what I know. I hope that motivates you to go back and start listening from day one to the things that we're talking about and exploring. I hope you don't ignore the meditations because I assure you that they're powerful and the breathing techniques that are being um, employed there are exceptionally powerful. And I hope that you're looking at the exercise videos as well because I'm going into a lot of techniques on things that many people just do wrong. It's not just a matter of moving guys, it's a matter of moving well, it's a matter of moving properly. And it's a, and then of course I share a lot of stretches in there for necks, elbows, wrists, shoulders, lower back. Anyway guys, I'm giving you some of the best stuff of what I have over the course of my entire adult life and more doing this stuff. It's all I do all day, seven days a week. Um, I've owned Fit for Life for 17 years. So just please try to respect that I'm giving you the best of what I know after writing 13 ma uh, different versions of the UTC manual and my Chasing 22 book that has a lot to do with free will and all of the things happening within the body and brain that matter uh, biologically that map onto our behavior. So hopefully you'll go back and if today's gonna be day one for you, then make it day one, but we have to start somewhere but I'm gonna keep giving you the best of what I got until the 40th day. And on the 40th day, maybe I'll give a little surprise, all right? Guys, have a great rest of the day. Please share the video and encourage other people to start the 40-day challenge from day one. But please subscribe to my channel and recommend it. Give me a thumbs up, comment at the bottom. Thank you, everybody.